Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we have a P53 workstation and of course this is a ThinkPad and it is big and it is beautiful and is just one hunk of machine. If you're not familiar with the ThinkPad P series you need to check out this video up here where I actually interview the product manager uh, for this series and just give some background and context as to what makes this uh, so important. We'll note that this one fares from the UK because of the keyboard, but overall is in fantastic condition and it's actually ready to go to its new owner this very evening. So I better get started. So the P53 was released in July of 2019 and it was designed of course to replace the P52. And this is a 15.6 inch beast. So we do have the full number pad and the entire thing is backlit. You could not get this in a non-backlit version. All sorts of options were available from infrared Windows Hello cameras, which this one does not have, a fingerprint reader, a color calibrator for the UHD display. And then of course we have dedicated uh, buttons at the bottom for left, right, and middle click. Our trackpad does not click down, and then we have, of course, dedicated uh, buttons for our track point as well. And this was a feature that was held in high demand for a good long while on the P-Series from the partners that actually purchased these machines. So in terms of display options, you had a 1920 by 1080, and that came in a 500-300 uh, nit panel. So you got a 300, which was at your lower end at a 700 to 1 contrast ratio with 72% color accuracy. You could also get a 500 nit in a 1200 to 1 uh, contrast ratio at 72 or 100% color accuracy. And then you got the beast. You had the UHD 3840 by 2160 OLED, which... Uh, could be configured to run 400 or 500 nits, was a touch display, and sported a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio, 100% color accuracy, DCI-P3. That display is also x right Pantone color calibrated from the factory. So that is kind of the absolute gold standard. Uh, we're not quite so lucky uh, with this particular display. Um, but it's still absolutely no slouch. The entire thing is being driven by Intel 9th generation. So you could get one i5, three i7s, and then you could also get a Xeon sported with this. And the RAM. If you need RAM, this is the machine you need. 128 gigabytes possible, four slots, DDR4-2666. GPUs were Intel UHD 630 or P630 if you were rocking the Xeon. And then there was also a variety of NVIDIA Quadro setups from the RTX 3, 4, and 5000, as well as the T1000 and T2000. And just because there wasn't enough to upgrade on the inside, we do have three possible storage devices on the inside, two M.2 2280 NVMe SSDs, and then one either 2.5 inch or another 2280 drive. So we'll see what that looks like when we turn this over and pop it open. The entire thing is being driven by a 90 watt hour battery, which can get anywhere from 8 to 13 hours, depending on configuration and how hard you're pushing the machine. And that battery is internally stored. And of course, the P series would maintain the more classic style hinge that we would see on the older T series line. And the Think Shutter, of course, is. Uh, present on these models, which is very handy for privacy, right next to the dual microphone array. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the ports that we have on this. There are quite a few. On the left-hand side of the machine, we do have a smart card reader, which was optional, but is equipped on this, a SD card reader, two USB ports. These are super speed. This one is always on. You do have HDMI, and that output will depend on the uh, GPU combinations. Along the back, we have even more. We do have our power port, and your power adapters for either 135 or 230 watt. You do have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and then you have a full-sized Ethernet port as well. 
We can see generous fan exhaust on either side, by the way, fanning out the back of the machine. And on the right hand side, we do have the Kensington lock slot, another USB type C port and a headphone microphone combo jack. I'm not 100% sure what this is. I'm going to have to check the uh, PS ref and see what it references there. It looks like it's a, it looks like a punch out for something that's not currently equipped on this machine. All right, if we turn this thing over, we can see a keyboard drainage hole, which is fantastic. And then getting into the machine is a trivial matter of removing some screws on a removable panel. To do that, we will need the complicated tool known as the Phillips screwdriver. And we are going to spin out these captive screws. We have two on the back, one in the middle, and then one in each corner on the main piece. Once those are out, we've got a groove here. We just dig a fingernail in. Make sure those screws are ready to be let go. And here is our upgrade ability right in the face. So we do have our very large 90 watt hour battery easily accessible here. We do have our CMOS battery located there. We have two RAM slots here and here. This one is currently unoccupied. The other two should be on the opposite side of the keyboard, which is very easy to remove. Over here, we have our two NVMe slots uh, with thermal pads uh, ready to go. And then this is where our two and a half inch bay would go uh, if we had that style of drive, or we can drop in a caddy for another 2280 NVMe. And our connector for that is right there. Over here, we have our Wi-Fi card and uh, the spot for our WAN card. We will note that the antennas are not ran for it, uh, but you could do that after the fact. It is a little bit of work, but not impossible. So removing the keyboard isn't quite as simple as removing a handful of screws. The first thing that we need to do is actually pop off the track point buttons. which I'm gonna do with this uh, <laughs> leftover gift card, which makes a great pry tool, by the way. With those two pried out, we need a very small Phillips. To spin out these two silver screws. And then once we've done that, we can coax the whole thing to the back, like so. Lift up, and then we can flip it over like this. So there are two ribbon cables here and here, one for the keyboard and one for the trackpad. And then our additional RAM is accessed uh, through this trap door here. And then we can see a whole bunch of other ribbon cables for further disassembly of the machine. I will be leaving a link to the hardware maintenance manual as well as a series of videos that ThinkPad that Lenovo provides for further disassembly. If you need to do it, it's actually not that difficult. But because this machine is going to its new owner in a matter of hours, we want to make sure that it is perfectly 100% in good shape. So we're going to put the whole thing back together, turn it on, and just see some quick boot times. Okay, with everything back together, let's power it on. All right, as to be expected from a P53 that's running an i7, we're doing very well. And just out of curiosity, we are gonna take a look. And 32 gigs of RAM, and this is the i7-9550H. An absolute whopper of a powerhouse. 
and very easy to work on, very easy to upgrade. If you're looking for a ninth generation workstation beast, and maybe you want to save a little bit of money, your average P53 is going to be anywhere between $550 up to $700 Canadian, depending on how it's spec'd out and where you're buying it from. There are a few deals to be had if you are willing to go down to the S variant, um, but those are also sometimes running 8th generation Intel. So I'll leave a couple links in the description down below where you might want to look to buy one of these. And hopefully you enjoyed this very quick overview of the P53 before it went out the door to its brand new owner. There's an awful lot to like. I think they're going to be pretty pleased with it. And I was uh, really happy that I got to quickly take a look at it and show it to you uh, before it went there. So if you enjoy this sort of content, I will leave some YouTube recommendations over here for you. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.